The USS Richard Montgomery is a Second World War American cargo ship wrecked in the heart of the Thames estuary. Her holds contain 1,400 tonnes of high explosives. She's lain dormant here for over 60 years. Where does the wreck actually sit? You see, you've got Sheerness over there in the Isle of Sheppey. That's, that's where we sail from there. OK. And that's, we're heading up the River Medway now. Right. So as we come up this channel, the wreck's just there, and you can see her masts stick out of the water just over there. So she's always visible? Always visible, really. There's always something of her sticking out of the, air, sticking out of the water. Um, and just judging by looking around at how many vessels are on the surface, now this is a busy place, isn't it? This is hugely busy. You've got two major waterways, uh, the Thames going that way and the Medway coming the other way. So in terms of what it is, it couldn't really be in a more inconvenient spot? You could say that. She, uh, yeah, she, she, she ran aground in an interesting place. I find that a really sinister sight. It just seems so wrong that that's a ship and it's just lying, you know, dead, but not properly disposed of out there. It's sad, it's just, the ship should be floating. The Montgomery, packed with explosives, survived U-boat attacks and safely crossed the Atlantic. When she entered the Sheerness anchorage, a storm was gathering. Most of the crew went ashore, and as the wind increased, those on watch were powerless to stop the ship drifting onto a sandbar. When the tide fell, the weight of the munitions on board broke the vessel in half. And now she's in two pieces. And she was fully laden with... Fully laden with explosives. With all sorts of spectacular fireworks. Lots of, lots of things that go bang, yes. Right. Stevedores were able to unload the rear holds of the wreck, but the front still contains a bewildering array of corroding bombs. If you look at, say, a, a, a thousand pound bomb, which was their standard, you know, a standard big bomb dropped from a heavy bomber, she's got thousands of them on board. 500 pound bombs, thousands. Um, small bombs dropped from fighters, thousands. Um, if you leave them there, they're fine. Um, they're in a nice environment. They're in cool water. Um, the water keeps them cool, keeps them happy. If stuff starts trying to leach out, the water generally will wash it away. There are some more dangerous things on board. There are fuses, the fuses that would go in those bombs to make them dangerous. They're all in boxes somewhere inside it. There's cluster bombs, um, which were actually loaded with fuses inside them. Because of the difficulty in clearing the wreck, it's been left where it sank. It isn't the Navy's responsibility, but the Department of Transport's. They regularly check its condition. So far, the explosives have remained stable but surveys of the hull indicate that it may break up in the next nine years. As you can see here, and this, is, this is one of the sonar sort of images of it, and you can see this area around it which has been dug out by the tide. And any explosives sort of fall out of it will, will sit in this, this sort of this dip. Oh, so it's in its own crater? Pretty much, yes, yeah, it's its own crater, because that's the effect of the tide washing past it and, and washing the sand out of it. It's hoped that the crater will contain any explosives spilling out of the disintegrating wreck. If, if it was to go boom, how big a boom would it be? Be a big bang. It's a big if. But if the worst were to happen, the explosion would equal the force of a small atomic bomb. Government experts estimate that the blast would throw debris 3,000 metres into the air and a subterranean shockwave could damage buildings up to three kilometres inland. The seismic jolt would be measurable around the globe. No one's sure what to do. It's a dilemma. Leave the ship to break up, try to dismantle her, or risk a controlled explosion. Whatever the answer, doing nothing may...